Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my esteemed co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, and today we are interviewing Pavlenex, who works on BTC Pay Server and uh, Bitcoin Design, amongst other things, uh, and is a, uh, a Bitcoiner. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess first off, uh, Pavlex, how how are you doing today? How's your how's your day been so far? Um, yeah, thanks, Lawrence, for the intro. Uh, glad to be here. Big fan of you guys. What you've been working on, been following like the story from the beginning. So happy to be here and chat about things. It's been good. Uh, busy day working in open source, connecting with people. Mondays are usually busy because of the time zone differences. So yeah, happy to be here, and uh, I'm fired up to discuss. Uh, about Bitcoin, I guess, and all other things. Awesome, yeah, me, me too. I'm I'm happy to just uh, have a chat and see see where it takes us. And uh, it's awesome to e meet you for the for the first time. Um, so I guess uh, yeah, to, to to get us started, I'll I'll do what I always do, and I'll ask you just like a a question, uh, kind of going pulling back to your kind of earlier time in life, uh, so we can kind of get a real feel for who you are, I guess, as a person. Um, so yeah, I suppose my, my, my question, my first question is, um, you know, what was life uh, like for you before Bitcoin? What were you up to? Um, and how did you find and kind of gain an interest in Bitcoin? Um, how, how did that all kind of take off? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm just a regular guy. Uh, life before Bitcoin, there is just a single word to explain it meaningless. Like with Bitcoin, I was able to find meaning in whatever it is that I'm doing. So uh, before Bitcoin, I was just a regular guy uh, involved in the tech industry a little bit and then in a little bit of copywriting as well. Um, then I found out uh, about, you know, uh, I had like all sorts of e-commerce businesses. And uh, once I found uh, about Bitcoin via Andreas video, I wanted to buy a Bitcoin t-shirt. There wasn't uh, one that really suit my uh, taste. So I started an e-commerce business, uh, which is Bitcoin shirts. And throughout that, I um, figure out that I need a way to accept this Bitcoin thing. And then I found BTC Pay Server. And that, that's how things in my life, basically, it's a piece of the tiny puzzles that keeps on building or legal blocks or blocks <laughs> that keeps on adding up in this uh, blockchain of mine. So yeah, things just go naturally for me. I'm just really a regular guy. I don't have like any super experience working for any big companies. I don't have like any um, insane education behind myself, just a regular guy hustling my way through uh, Bitcoin right now. So yeah, that's, that's a summary, but if uh, you ask, like, uh, when was the first time that I found Bitcoin? I think it was 2013. And I tell the story on every podcast. And Britt Kelly from BTC Pay Server, I'm not sure if you know her. She uh, told me never to tell this story again because, like, she's tired of hearing it all over again. But I will. So, Britt, if you're listening, once again, I always give her this disclaimer. Just skip it. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a younger brother. And he was, like, uh, doing some web development thing. But he was, like, uh, 12 at the time. <laughs> And um, yeah, so um, he wanted to, you know, transact. He there, there was a guy he worked for and he needed to pay to him, but we didn't have PayPal here where I'm based up until 2016, I think, which is crazy if you look at from the, you know, any other uh, non-developing country. So she was a, she told me like, Pop, uh, yeah, there is this Bitcoin thing and uh, this guy needs to pay to me. So how do we do it? And I was like, man, that's a scam what Bitcoin think like it's there are other ways like well it's the Western Union and I think we ended up doing that so yeah uh, four years later I think it was actually 2016 um, I figure out through Andreas videos completely randomly and just you know dived into the rabbit hole uh, I even remember like it was a video I think it's uh, the internet of money or something like that I think most of us uh, but then in the back of my hand uh, the, the timestamps do, do not match my uh, my memory when, when was the first time I, I'm quite sure that I went into Bitcoin and in 2016 but the video was published in early 2017 so it's weird but yeah that's a summary of my story. Yeah, it does. It gives a little bit of a kind of insight as to because I, I find it interesting how yeah different guests, different people I speak to, uh, everyone kind of seems to have this different path into Bitcoin as to like why they're interested in it and 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 like almost like how they came across it. So like for yourself, it was more like e-commerce side as to as to how you came across it. It's like well, hey, I want to 
um, except a different payment method, or as you said, there's like PayPal wasn't an issue, wasn't wasn't present. Um, so like from an e-commerce point of view, it kind of exposes you to Bitcoin, um, whereas lots of people have different reasons. I suppose like um, an interesting thing to me, because you've kind of touched on, 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 on kind of going down the rabbit hole and kind of what the value you saw in Bitcoin, but like, what would you say is kind of the, um, if there is one thing, if not, I guess two, but what would you say is the one thing that really, kind of stuck to you like what was the one thing that really was it that appealed to you about bitcoin was it something more technical or the ability for payments to be for everyone or the deflationary aspect or the kind of uh, ability for people to take control of, of money again kind of thing what was your what was it to you to you that stuck out yeah i guess just the ability that it gives freedom to anybody like to me that was like uh, eye-opening because I really didn't understand it in the beginning like I tried to get some but here where I live we didn't have any exchanges and when when I tried to see how I can get those bitcoins that I you know learned about it was really hard for me to to get it so I started doing some freelance work and then people just you know asked me for address I provided them address and I had them bitcoins in my wallet which was to me like wait I don't have to register anywhere and like there are no fees and there is no like a company that's holding this now for me so I can spend it. And then I tr tried, you know, I tr started uh, hiring freelancers for, for myself, for other businesses. And then I simply, it worked and it made uh, sense to me logically because I come from, a, as I said, already like a developing country. Uh, we did, don't have like all of those. Uh, well, at least we do have them now, but we didn't have them like a few years ago. Like uh, even credit cards here weren't as much used. And to me, like just being able to transact without any overhead, um, it, it was eye opening because people usually say Bitcoin has bad UX, Bitcoin is this and that. But in the reality, it's very simple, right? You just don't have those barriers that you have with other legacy financial systems and people who, uh, who have the access to those simply do not understand, um, you know, uh, cannot understand Bitcoin in the same way. I get uh, that people from developing countries, usually Bitcoin clicks naturally for them. We even had like uh, inflation, hyperinflation here in the 90s. So to me, um, deflationary aspect of Bitcoin, like the limited uh, supply cap, all of that made sense to me, it just clicked, you know. And then afterwards, I was like dived into a technical side a bit more, but it was just, you know, basic properties of Bitcoin that drew me into, into the rabbit hole. The BTC Pay project is probably one of the most important projects uh, for infrastructure being built on top of Bitcoin. How long have you been involved with, with the project? Uh, I've been involved since the beginning, basically. Um, that e-commerce side of um, that I was involved and wanted to accept Bitcoin payments. I tried a few other providers, but coming from a country where I, you know, it was very hard. They asked me for passports and all sorts of documentation. And we naturally are suspicious of those things because, you know, we don't trust governments. We don't trust companies. It's basically like how, because we, we were scammed by banks in the nineties. We were scammed by, you know, governments. And I'm always careful with my, you know, providing data to anybody. And to me, that's how I started to explore how I can accept Bitcoin. And then I realized, well, wait, this is very similar to like trying to find Stripe or PayPal because all of these guys asked me for the same information and they now you know, want me to provide all sorts of things. So to me, it didn't really make sense. So I think that I made a post on Reddit and then some guy started yelling at me like, you're dumb, like Bitcoin really does not work that way. You shouldn't use, a, you know, trust a third party in order to accept payments. And he started yelling basically. And at that time I was like, why is he yelling at me? Like, why? And then he told me like, there is this little project, BTC Pay server, this French guy made it and he shared a tweet with me or I don't remember it was really GitHub repository. So I come to Slack, there are like five people in or 10 people in the Slack, they're talking about something. And then I ask, hey, I want to accept Bitcoin payments. And Nicholas simply goes ballistic, like, oh, fuck, we have somebody who wants to accept payments finally. And he started like explaining to me, well, you need to do this. And now you wait two weeks. And I'm like, why do I need to wait two weeks? And he's like, well, you know, node needs to sync up and we have, and it costs $60, you know, to run this thing on a server. I'm like, why, wait, why, why does this even work this way? But I then quickly realized that it really, we improved it over the time. Now it takes really, you, you can deploy your BTC based server instantly. There is like no need to wait for things. And yeah, we improved quite a lot. But uh, to answer your question, sorry, Ricardo, I'm like ranting a little bit because it brings lots of memories to me. Like, 
Um, to me, being able to you know talk to Nicola at, in the beginning, a rock star developer, and then Cooks, it really opened um, access to all these smart people that I learned from and that uh, allowed me to grow basically in this space as well. And with that, that's always what I try to allow other people as well. Like uh, try, I try to be accessible the same way they were to me in order to, so to other people to be able to grow the same way I did. So it, it is, uh, I think it's four years now, I think, or yeah, four years since I've I've been involved into BTC Pacer. I've been there from the from the very beginnings of see, seeing all the hardships that we had. And yeah, simply saw the project grew from uh, 10 people in Slack to thousands of users right now. And there are like big companies that use BTC Pacer, which is really awesome to see and quite motivating as well. It's quite a cool story in a sense of like... A kind of like stumbling into this kind of chat and then just being like you know i'm interested in suddenly people being like whoa <laughs> you know there's someone uh there's someone actually wants to use this uh this uh service of that we're providing or we're going to provide i think that's quite cool um especially since yeah from their perspective they maybe were thinking of building this this thing and then they weren't sure necessarily that it would actually take off or people would want to use it so it's, it's got to be good for them that you kind of popped up um i guess like uh since obviously you've been working on BTC Pay Server and uh, uh, and kind of helping with it from the very 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 beginning, uh, making it what it is. Uh, one one of the questions here is like, hey, you know, say I'm I've never heard of BTC Pay Server before ever, um, and I'm someone who's brand new listening to this podcast. Um, tell me, you know, what is BTC Pay Server? Why should I care? And how do I use it? Basically, how do I go ahead? I'm spin up a you know a node or, or get get going with btc pay server yeah sure that's an awesome question um there are like two ways of explaining it. When, whenever i try to explain it to friends i start with uh, you know we have paypal now here in order to accept payments you need to use their infrastructure register on their website and then they take fees out of you but with bitcoin um you basically have the software that you can run on your machine computer server whatever and you are able to get access to all this uh, infrastructure that PayPal has, accept, accepting payments. Just you're your own payment processor. You're your own PayPal. You own the PayPal. Imagine if PayPal opened their technology and allow everybody to use it for free, uh, and just cutting off uh, middlemen. So BTC Pay Server, in a way, is free and open source payment processor that allows people to accept Bitcoin payments without any processing fee and without the involvement of a third party. So uh, it is used by a uh, very different uh, type of people and merchants. Like you have uh, very hardcore Bitcoiners using it just to manage their funds because BTC Pay Server is way more than just a payment processor. Basically, it's a payment platform. We like to call it modular payment platform because we're building it, as Ricardo earlier mentioned, as a infrastructure software that allows you to build on top of Bitcoin, if and if, even if you're a developer, merchant, or just a regular user, just wanting to you know experiment with Bitcoin, BTC Pay Server as a software gives you all sorts of flexibility to basically accept Bitcoin payments. So if there is like, if I can explain BTC Pay Server simply, it would be just ex accept Bitcoin payments, and that's all. It it allows you to accept Bitcoin payments, and later on you can do insane amount of. Uh, things with it. It is very flexible and very importantly, it's free and open source. It's built by a contributors around the world. At this point, it is very hard to count how many people contributed to BTC Pay Server, probably over 150. And I'm not even including like translators because just our translating community has probably over 100 people. So quite a lot of people are helping bring BTC Pay Server to the world for free. It's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool vision, actually. And then to see it being successfully built with the help of like lots of different people as well is is pretty cool um I, I definitely think i'm a i'm a fan of what's been done um i suppose like um a question for yourself actually here like you know i, I understand now as i say I'm a, I'm a first time listener first time never heard of pcc pace ever i understand uh what it does and and why i should care um i suppose the question now is like hey like you know when it comes to um yourself like what what do you do like what's your what's your current role what are you you know what have you built or helped with what are you building helping with like what's your you know what what do you do i guess is the, is the basic question i suppose with the btc pay server 
Yeah, sure. So my role, um, they call me the janitor of the BTC based server. I do all the cleaning, all the organization, and uh, I'm currently the most mostly involved in uh, helping structure the development process and release cycle of the BTC based server. I am in a way, um, and it's not just me, like there are quite a few more people assisting me with this, but yeah, I'm uh, trying to bridge the gap between end users and then the core team and developers around BTC based server and try to you know make it fun for everybody for users to use it for btc pay server developers to have like when whenever there is a bug report or just a user who doesn't know to explain because you know users come to btc pay server and they have all, all sorts of questions and uh, the most problematic thing is just structuring what they really really are asking and you know uh, how that information can be condensed and uh, communicated to a developer who just needs this few sentences in order to fix a bug or develop a new feature. So I'm trying to bridge a gap between that. Uh, I was also earlier involved in content making. I made a, quite a lot of videos, but with my accent, as you can hear, it's not uh, the best. So people sometimes complain, but yeah, uh, there is this angry, they call me angry Russian guy, you know, explaining BTC pay server to people on YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, now we have other contributors, so now they can make proper British accent. So yeah, uh, no no offense to your accent, Lawrence, but yeah, people seem to care about accents these days. So yeah, I'm just now trying to, you know, also help people um, get involved with the BTC pay server, trying to, you know, uh, make space for them as well to grow the same way I did. I'm just a regular guy and the BTC pay server and the crew around it really helped uh, change my life. I'm never ashamed to, you know, tell this. They, they really changed my life. And we are just became more than colleagues. We are really, all of us are really friends at this point, just building cool software with friends. That's just uh, something that uh, is great opportunity to me. So I try to involve other people and, you know, try to also connect them, how they can contribute, see how I can motivate people to contribute. And yeah, but yeah, uh, simply said, I'm janitor. That's how they call me. But in a uh, big company terms or yeah, fancy language, that would be like a project or product management side of stuff. So I find like when it comes to like work or like, I don't know, I guess, yes, work, isn't it? At the end of the day, uh, I guess when it comes to that kind of side of things, it's um you can tell when you're talking to someone who is just working because they've got to work and they've got to make a living and whatever, build a career for a pension and all this kind of stuff. You can tell the difference between when you talk to someone like that and then you can tell the difference when you talk to someone like that and then you talk to someone who um, is doing it because they want to and then the people around them are also doing it because they want to. And then as a byproduct, you become very close with the people because you both share an extremely you know, powerful vision um, that you all see the kind of value in uh, and i can definitely tell that with the the way that you talk about btc pay server and, and your current role and what you do uh, that you're kind of sharing a pretty strong vision with uh, you know your colleagues and now friends uh, which is a pretty cool thing to hear and um i guess it just always endears uh, endears someone to a service right like it makes you even more into the idea of utilizing a service if you know the people working on it are doing it because they have the love for it not because you know faceless nameless career driven ambitions etc i guess like a, a cool question actually i suppose what what do you think um if btc pay server didn't exist um you know everything else did bitcoin still exists we're still on the same planet what what would you what do you think you'd be doing like where do you think life would uh, it's, a, it's a hard question but where do you think life might have taken you i guess if you if you kind of extract btc pay server from it like what do you think you would have gravitated towards do you think you would have found another way to kind of work more in in bitcoin and, and open source software or or, or what Wow, you're now trying to make me really depressed. I don't know. I cannot even imagine how my life would be right now. Like just thinking back about it, it would probably be me either being an entrepreneur of some sort, running some sort of e-commerce business probably because that's what I'm always passionate about. But yeah, uh, I'm not sure, really. I, I really couldn't imagine where I would be if I, if there wasn't for Nicola Doria, Rockstar there, Cooks, and other people in BTC Pay Server who dragged me into, into this, uh, uh, yeah, basically community. We've been right, uh, like through a lot of lots of things together because BTC Pay Server. Now we have like BTC Pay Server Foundation, which is helping you know fund people who work for BTC Pay Server. But in the early days, as you said, of BTC Pay. It was just like a few of us building a software and, you know, relying on, on people donations to for the income. And it overtook my life because I really didn't care for the income at that point. I just 
uh, it clicked for me like this really makes a lot of sense people need access to this kind of software and let's try to you know make it accessible to people like let's try to improve it make it easier to run make it easier to use so to me it's like uh, i i really cannot imagine what i would be doing and i really don't want to think about it less. so <laughs> yeah uh, as as I said, we worked for on BTC Pay server for two years be, before we formed. That's basically free work, and we simply enjoyed it. We invested uh, all of our time. I then quit all of my other initiatives, projects, goals that I have, because to me it just clicked. Uh, I found the meaning uh, through contributing to BTC Pay server, and that's all, the only thing that mattered. Later on, we we'll, we were able to find a model which works for us, uh, have a BTC based server foundation, which funds the work of uh, myself and tens of other contributors at this point. We are growing, we have corporate support, supporters supporting us, allowing us to uh, work what we re uh, really love and allowing other people to use BTC based server freely. So yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, I cannot even imagine what it would be. <laughs> If it wasn't for BTC Pay. Well, um, I have a slightly similar question, but not really similar, but on the same um, path. Um, what I was going to ask is, uh, what are there other projects that you find interesting aside from working on BTC Pay, BTC Pay server that you think that would be worth, you know, your contribution? You know, I, you've made it, you know, perfectly clear that you couldn't see yourself, you know, doing anything else. But are there projects, you know, probably in Lightning or, you know? Colored coins or anything within the Bitcoin or even crypto space at large. Who knows? You might love NFTs. You know that <laughs> things that might interest you that you think would be worth your time. Yeah, I'm actually involved in quite a few other projects as well because, as I said, uh, I'm very grateful for BTC Pay Server, but I'm also want to give space to other contributors to be able to grow, take the initiative, and you know contribute a bit more. Uh, also, I find it very important that in this space that is rapidly growing, you don't tie yourself to a single project because uh, even if we fund the BTC Pay Server contributors to BTC Pay Server Foundation, what we try to do is always find them something else to work on as well, either a side job or whatever, because, you know, maybe they won't spend full time on BTC Pay Server itself, but they will be able to connect with other people and get uh, you know, they won't be locked in the echo chamber because this space uh, changes quite rapidly. And unless you're connected to people constantly developing, uh, just, you know, learning from others as well, uh, it, it really doesn't make sense to lock yourself in a single project. And uh, I'm also involved in Bitcoin design, which uh, is basically a project uh, developing a free resource or a guideline for application builders who are building on top of Bitcoin. We are trying to create uh, resources for them to be able to build Bitcoin applications easier because, you know, if you have uh, examples of how people have built something, you have like uh, best practices and you have like uh, maybe mockups, uh, you have recommendations. It is easier for people to de develop a wallet, for example. So that's one, another project that I'm also involved in. Uh, my um, half time, uh, not half time, but part time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sport type of guy, but I do know what a half time is in football. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I, I try to get involved in as, in as many projects as I can. I try to, you know, connect with people all the time because I really think it is important. You cannot stay in the loop on what is going on. Like in Bitcoin, every single day something changes, there are projects popping up new improvement, improvements being made. And for in order for you to be up to date with that, you need to just talk to people, try to contribute, even if it's just one hour per week, go to any, you know, Telegram group, uh, Slack, wherever there are communities, just, you know, read, read what they are talking about. It's the best way to learn just like, you know, experimenting, talking to people and getting involved in things. And you'll find eventually a project that is, uh, you know, that, that you're passionate about and that, drags you into something that may be able to, you know, help you find a meaning same way it did for me. So yeah, I'm ranting a little bit at this point, but it's just, I'm trying to figure out if there are some specific projects. Like I really love LN URL. I think it is very undervalued project. I also love anything that is built by uh, Ben. Uh, ben, uh, he calls himself uh, BTC socialist, as far as I remember on Twitter, like he is also building uh, at an insane pace. I'm a big fan of a lightning address project, which allows people to send, you know, uh, 
payments through Lightning, just uh, through the same way uh, you would as you would through email, like you have Lightning address, which is like also a very big UX improvement to Bitcoin. So anything basically that improves UX around Bitcoin payments is something that will always drag me into it. That is, I think, the, the core of what I'm passionate about is, yeah, UX of Bitcoin payments. You mentioned making BTC pay easy to use for people and uh, Luna node, the one click installer is probably the easiest way. That's how I launched my BTC pay server. And I know a bunch of other people that have used Luna node also. How did that partnership come along? Yeah, that's, that is an interesting story. So we were trying to find at that time a VPS provider with, that accepts Bitcoin, but doesn't use BitPay or whatever. And it was really hard for us to find the provider that is, has proper specs that isn't expensive and that, you know, where we can deploy our test instances and test stuff. So we found out about Luna Node. I'm not even sure which provider they used at some point. It was quite a while ago, but we, you know, talked to them and the guy in charge, CEO or Fabian, I think is his name. He was very open, like, what are you guys developing? Oh, that seems interesting. And then we simply wait, what if we were able to create a web deployment that people can basically, they don't even even to, you know, uh, go to command line and deploy a server. So what if they could do it through a, you know, graphical user interface and deploy a server? So that's uh, how we, you know, partnered with Luna Node in a way, but it's just, uh, they basically did all the work. We just provided some technical help on what our users may, you know, need in order to deploy BTC pay server, but that script as well is open source. There are like a few other providers working on it. Like I also know Voltage, I think it's the name of the company. They're also like have a very easy, even maybe easier at this point than Luna node of deploying BTC pay server to people. And uh, quite honestly, we have like so many tutorials that even if you just know how to follow along a YouTube tutorial, you'll be able to deploy BTC pay server on any virtual private server in basically 10 minutes because we condense so much command line. It's just basically, I think it's at this point, just four lines of command line in order to deploy it on a server. So yeah, just being able to follow along with the specs of the server and then just follow a tutorial, it is easy. We, I personally and the team, we don't like like BTC pay server being tied to a single provider because yeah, that is the centralization. I'm very happy that lately, uh, there are many projects that are integrating BTC pay server like Umbrel, you have like um, MyNode and a, quite a few others that allow you to run BTC pay server because you can run BTC pay server in, even with a, ras a Raspberry Pi at home. So there are like all sorts of ways to deploy it and run it. So anything that decentralizes it is it's good because it strengthens basically. Imagine what would happen if Luna Node died and there may be, <laughs> I don't know, 10,000 BTC pay server instances. I don't have a number. We don't really keep a track of those. There, we don't have a way of knowing it, but what would that would be pretty bad. So I'm happy that it is decentralizing lately. Uh, this is a bit of a change of topic now, but um, I, I saw that on, on Twitter that you were in. Um, I, I, are you involved with the Bitcoin Smiles project in El Salvador, or are you just a big fan of it? I couldn't, I couldn't uh, quite establish that for sure. Um, is my first question. I am the janitor of the Bitcoin Smiles project. I uh, help them set up the BTC Pay server, and yeah, I can talk about it. It's an awesome project. So, I think three months ago. Um, when this whole El Salvador saga was going on and we were all interested, like how are people accepting payments and me being interested in the Bitcoin payments UX, I just reached out to people on Twitter and I asked them like, hey, are you from El Salvador? Do you have like, uh, I don't know, one hour to chat with me about things and like 10 people applied, <laughs> they wanted to chat. So I was on a holiday um, with friends and girlfriend and they wanted to kill me because I was like, you know, talking to people uh, while they were at the beach but it, to me it was like just learning about El Salvador how people live there what do they use how do they use Bitcoin or what wallets do they use and among those people was uh, you know Enrique and he was very heartwarming guy he was awesome and we started talking and he talked to talk to me about his career, how he's a dentist in El Salvador, that, you know, people there lack basic health care, that there are so many people struggling and one thing I always love about open source, and that's I always ask questions like, okay, how what can we do to help? Like, let's let's do something to improve that. And we started, you know, going back and forth. And I was like, well, we have BTC Pay server. We do have like a built-in crowdfunding feature. Well, let's just deploy that. We don't need anything else. Like, let's just deploy it. To help tell your story, and maybe we can raise, I don't know, 100, 200 bucks to see, you know, what we can do. 
And then we started talking to people and they were like, well, you will probably raise more. Like people would donate. That seems like an interesting initiative. So we started talking and he started, you know, working on uh, technical type sort of things. Like he had a database of patients, elderly people who really never had a, a access to, you know, having uh, their kids fixed or, you know, just didn't have basic uh, access to healthcare. So we started the crowdfunding campaign. It really went well. Bitcoin community really, uh, you know, recognized it mostly because, you know, there are quite a few people that help us, you know, push it through. Um, there were like five people involved in, you know, writing the content for it, uh, you know, taking photographs. I think it was a team of us five, me, Enrique, Alexa, uh, Patricia, and Zach. So five people involved in, you know, making this initiative happen. And in the past, BTC Pacer tries to do once a year these sorts of initiatives because it allows us to see, you know, help somebody. And also we get a lot of feedback from people when they use BTC Pacer to accept or uh, send payments. We always like find bugs and because it is like intensive use of BTC Pay Server. So yeah, it started as a simple idea and it really grew. Uh, at this point, I think uh, 1.8 Bitcoin has been raised, which will allow us to really give uh, make a lot of people smile because it is an initiative where we're trying to raise funds for elderly people of El Salvador who are living on the outskirts, uh, basically in the villages with no, you know, access to transportation, uh, electricity, water. And what we are trying to do is just bring smiles to those uh, people by Bitcoin, trying to show that Bitcoin isn't really about, you know, getting rich, uh, preserving wealth. To me, Bitcoin will always be about freedom and making people happy. So we are trying to make people smile and happy through the Bitcoin Smiles initiative. And I think currently it, it is really just started as a simple crowdfunding campaign. But at this point, we have people from all over the whole world contacting us. Hey, I want to volunteer my time to this organization. We are like, uh, this isn't really an organization. It is like just five of us, you know, deploying BTC Pay server, trying to do something good. But now uh, we'll see. We probably will, you know, set up a proper nonprofit there for people to be able really to, you know, send donations, send equipment as well, because it is really, it really made the quite a lot of, uh, you know, noise through the community and made a lot of people happy. And yeah, we currently, I think we treated five patients fully, which is awesome. And I think we'll be able to, you know, treat at least, I don't know, at this point, 60, 70 or even more. So we'll see in the next um, few months how impactful the project will be. It's pretty, pretty I know, amazing journey for BTC Pay Server. I remember, you know, Nicholas Doria's famous, I will end you, you know, speech to Bojiver. And um, <laughs> so I wanted to ask, what has been the, you know, what has been, you know, the biggest challenge for BTC Pay Server, you know, for you working on the project and for the project as, you know, as a whole, what has been the biggest challenge that you guys have had to overcome or that you guys are currently facing, you know, at the moment, you know, is, has it, does it have anything to do with, um, you know, getting people to actually use BTC, you know, pay server or, you know, something that, you know, from funding, what exactly are the challenges that you guys are facing? Yeah, there are like, it really depends on the, you know, time frame where we're looking at, like in the beginning, it was probably finding users who would use it. Like, why would anybody use a random project that nobody heard of? Later on, it was funding sustainability. Like, how do we help all of these people who are, who are helping, like uh, BTC Pay Server? How we can make their time worth? Because you know, they are really investing. They are spending more time on BTC Pay Server than they are on their regular jobs. And yeah, then we solved that with BTC Pay Server Foundation. And now, I think currently one of the biggest challenges is you know how do we uh, make BTC Pay Server easy enough for regular users like grandma grandpa mom and pop shops but at the same time flexible enough for developers to be able to you know build all sorts of crazy things so on the front end the challenge is that everything should be very minimal simple you just you know few clicks you're able to connect it to your woocommerce shopify or whatever and you're able to receive payments um, you can invoice clients and stuff like that but how do we enable developers to build all of those crazy things and you know um, maybe even plugins, because recently we've added plugin functionality into BTC Pay Server that will allow people to extend its use cases even more. Like if you're a developer, there is this core software that's being devel developed, and then you have all sorts of extensions that you can build in order to, you know, improve its functionality. So that's like, I think currently that is our biggest challenge, um, just figuring out how 
all of these things can be very simple and how we can reach both of uh, those goals, which seems both of those goals seem quite different. Like how can you cater to the end user, which is not tech savvy, and then how you uh, can make software APIs and everything um, so flexible that, you know, developers can build entire businesses on top of VTC pay server. Basically, that's what I think is the biggest challenge. And then there is also like, I'm not sure if you guys know, but BTC Pay server isn't like if you're an end user, you can deploy it and accept Bitcoin payments. What you can do is onboard thousands of your friends to your server. So basically, you're in a way becoming a you know, payment processor for your local community. You can allow other people to simply register on your website and you're becoming payment processor, allowing them not to be able to you know, take care of the server uptime or whatever there, there else might be, DDoS attacks or whatever. So... Um, we are also trying to see how we can, you know, give incentives to those people running those instances. We call them third-party hosts, how we can allow it easier for them to onboard people. And we are developing some prototypes of mobile application that will allow people to connect to their instance and BTC-based servers. So quite a lot of challenges. And it, it is never boring, I guess, in our community. There is like all sorts of things. And then they, there you have Lightning Network. How do we scale that? How can, you know, all these people deploying... Uh, Lightning nodes, how we can make them get inbound liquidity. You know, you guys at B3 Phil, you do sell inbound liquidity. There are quite a few other providers. And how do we connect all of that? How do we onboard people to this network? Those are some of the challenges that are on top of my head when it comes to, you know, maybe next year or so that we still haven't figured out, but I'm confident at some point we will. I uh, I just wanted to ask something that was a little bit more out there and um, a little bit more, I guess, like something that's quite like a topical recently uh, and that was the point of uh like people uh, bitcoin on twitter i guess um it se- seems to me that like uh, there's this kind of recent uh argument i guess about bitcoin maximalism and like toxicity and, and things like that so you've got like uh, i think it was Udi Verheim said that um he wasn't a fan of it and all this kind of stuff and i, I guess i didn't i didn't know I, I what i wanted to ask you was like hey you've got your fingers in a lot of pies, like you're dealing with a lot of different things that are like decent projects like the BTC Pay Server, Bitcoin Design, um, Bitcoin Smiles. They're, they're, they're quite like uh, ambitious and I guess wholesome is probably a good term for it, I guess, projects that are doing good things for the world. So I didn't know what your view was on like, hey, how how much does, how, I guess, like, and, and you can feel free to decline to answer, but like how much do, do you think like... Um, how much good do you think like people uh, maximalists on Twitter do, I guess, for Bitcoin? Like, cause uh, I guess it's like a, this hotly debated thing of if it puts people off or brings them in, or um, I, I guess you're making such a big impact in these projects you're involved in. I didn't know what you thought about the impact of, yeah, I guess like maximalism and, and, and kind of influences and stuff on, on Twitter um, when it comes to Bitcoin and people who are new. Yeah. I guess there are always two sides of the story. Like I think, Uh, They are doing important work protecting people from scams and getting their money lost. Like, I guess if there wasn't for Bitcoin Twitter, I may have even wandered into the altcoin, you know, uh, Ethereum or whatever. I've never actually had a time to even research those projects because Bitcoin was so exciting for me. Uh, Lots of things going on. So I really don't use any of those. But at the same time, I am always for freedom of choice and giving people the ability to do whatever they want to do. So if there are people wanting to develop something, you know, I don't know, and they have use case for it, why don't allow it to them to, you know, do whatever they want. So I guess those toxic debates uh, can be beneficial for both sides, but they're also like, uh, you know, doing like quite a lot of heated debates. I try to stay away from the drama, to be honest. Uh, I'm more interested into connecting really with people who build than people who talk. But I don't say like that people who talk uh, aren't beneficial for this uh, community of ours as well, because, you know, they try to protect newbies basically. But yeah, some of them also do it for, you know, clicks, likes, retweets or whatever. So always try to be cautious, you know, when evaluating uh, a standpoint where somebody's coming from. So yeah, if I can just give advice, one advice about that is just try to connect with people who are really building impactful things, doing also all sorts of cool things. Because if you end up, you know, yelling on Twitter, 
you are missing out on quite a lot of development being built and uh, quite a lot of ideas and really cool people because yeah you have vocal mi minority on twitter yelling but there is like uh, quite a lot of people who don't get uh, get uh, the, the same attention that they deserve um and they are like doing some really awesome work in this space so yeah for me i just look, look at it as an entertainment whenever i'm bored i go to either i you know laugh yeah it's fun memes and all, all sorts of stuff but at the end of the day it also allows me to connect with uh, product makers people who have interesting ideas and basically you know connect uh, with like-minded individuals in this industry so to me that is even more interesting and if you can find a way to use twitter in that way it would be more beneficial than you're trying to yell at each other i guess i just wanted to go back to the plugins that you mentioned do you guys envision like a wordpress style ecosystem of, of plugins being developed for btc pay yeah that is exactly an idea that's a great point we do we try to refer to it as btc pay server becoming the wordpress for bitcoin payments like um that on one way brings a lot of security problems because if you have developers you know developing we do need to find figure out the system and that's why it is uh, it's still uh, in beta for us we we'll, we are still tinkering how we can make all of this secure like abstract the wallets hot wallets and whatnot from the plugins itself and yeah because at some point you'll have people developing maybe malicious plugins and try to steal funds from the wallets so we try to you know secure all of that and it is still like early days of plugins. Uh, but yeah, the idea is to have basically a free marketplace where people can build ad features while the core team can stay focused on stability of the software, meaning that the core software will always be, be about accepting Bitcoin payments. But if you want to use BTC Pay server, I don't know, as something else like uh, maybe there is some other I, I cannot think of a use case at this moment but there are like people constantly requesting features from us and we really just want to focus on our mission being able to have a stable software while others can maybe make money by developing those plugins or you know just develop plugins without waiting for us to review those uh, you know uh, features because people come to our github they do a pull request and say hey add this featuring to btc pacer and then the way we approach it is, is it really useful for majority of our users or is it really just useful for this one guy who, this, who just wants to do this one specific thing? And the, if the answer is, you know, one specific thing, then we, hey, sorry, but we, this really doesn't benefit majority of our users. It is really not something we would like to implement because it would clutter the experience for other people. So, you know, you can develop a plugin and use it without having to fork BTC Pay server. So that is our idea, trying to solve all of those problems. But yeah, there are lots of uh, issues with that as well, but we are still figuring things out. So, uh, I have to ask, um, this is a question I, I tend to ask some of my guests, and you seem like a pretty interest, you know, interesting person, especially looking at your profile picture that says fight the system. So this is about El Salvador. Um, you are aware that, um, you know, BTC has, you know, come to stay in, in El Salvador, but there is the law that's, you know, mandates, you know, the citizens of El Salvador to, El Salvador to actually, you know, accept Bitcoin or face jail time, accept Bitcoin when offered. So how would you see the adoption of Bitcoin in, Salvador, in El Salvador, especially when you consider that, you know, the government is, um, basically, you know, and you know, forcing Bitcoin. Although many of them might be happy about it, but it's you know, as a matter of you know fact, they're actually forcing you know people to actually accept Bitcoin when offered. How would you you know this for someone like you who I assume you know is pretty much you know, um, but I say a rebel, government rebel. Um, how how do you feel about that? You know, is it a net positive for Bitcoin or what in a broader sense, or it's a no no for you? Um, that's a very interesting question. Um, I've been thinking about it, and I dug deeper into that uh, law that they had, and apparently, you are not forced um, to accept it um, if you don't have access to internet or technology. So basically, from what I understood, and I think this is my understanding of it, is that you don't have to accept it if you don't have these things like you can always say well i don't have access to internet i don't have access to technology um you know my parents are in the retail business and 
I often think uh, of this because when the credit cards arrive, they try to force it on them. Like it is required by law for you to use it. And they were always stressing around, you know, small business, you know, every cent for them counts basically. Um, they are, don't have workers trained. Like, how do we do this? Like, what is this terminal thing? And then they added like some fiscalization, they call it uh, this year, like, you know, improving the, you know, reducing the gray economy by basically state being able to have access into everything that you do at your store. So anything that forces uh, people to do stuff, I'm not a fan of it, but at the same time, um, I I think that uh, it was maybe needed in order for Bitcoin to thrive in a way. Uh, so I try to look at it from these people perspective. They may not understand this technology at first, but what I'm really hoping for is that they will be able to save in Bitcoin and that, eventually over the years, it will actually be beneficial for them. Because yeah, uh, if we have like uh, them saving in Bitcoin, then Bitcoin price going up or, you know, just just remaining stable would be good. Um, it would be like quite a big thing for them. So uh, I don't know. I, I've been thinking about it. I'm not sure. Do you have any like view on, on it, Jerry? Because I'm trying to think like, am I, am I a fan of it or not? As a Bitcoiner, I love it, but then like, yeah, as a rebel, as you say, it's really not my cup of tea when state tries to enforce anything to people. Um, I think we're pretty much in the same boat because um, I haven't made up my mind as to whether, you know, it's good or bad I, because, but number go up and it's a good thing. But, you know, we, we it, it kind of makes us, makes us, you know, hypocrites because we can't, you know, keep saying, you know, get, you know, keep government out of, you know, money, separate money from, you know, from the state. And at the same time, you know, keep cheering what El Salvador is doing. So uh, really it's, I mean, among, amongst the, you know, the three of us, um, it's, we personally, I don't know, man. I really don't know. What do you think, Ricardo? I'm kind of skeptical about the Chivo wallet. I've heard some, some shady things about how Chivo wallet is engineered to like spy on who your contacts are and, and basically be like a tool for financial surveillance for the state. And, um, the majority of people that are using Bitcoin in El Salvador are using the state uh, sponsored Chivo wallet. So I think it would probably be a better decision as a Bitcoiner in El Salvador to use an open source wallet rather than the uh, state spyware wallet. I guess when it comes to the, the law, um, does, it, I get, does it come down to like an ethical discussion of like, hey, to you, do the means justify the end or do they not kind of thing, right? I, I, th I feel like that's kind of like a, a big part to play in it. Like, are you, are, and I think everyone differs, but like, are you someone who says, hey, the means justify the end? Or are you someone that's like, you know, no, like, you know, yeah, sure, it can be a noble goal, but we've got to get there in a noble fashion too. Um, so I guess that's like everyone's question to answer, right? Like, do you, are you happy with the way, are you, are you happy as long as, you know, everyone is... It's kind of that thing, it's like, you know, if everyone's free and we're living in this great utopia, but to get there, you know, some stuff has to happen where some people get forced to use something and maybe, you know, they might lose some money or, you know, end up buying, but not really understanding Bitcoin and getting conned or all these kinds of things. Um, that may happen. Is it a means justify the end situation or is it a that's still wrong situation? And I guess it, um, yeah, just depends, I guess, on your personal views, doesn't it, on that one? not sure i don't know i don't think any of us can say wholeheartedly like yeah massive fan of this of this of this thing they're doing yeah i mean are have you guys uh been to el salvador or are you would you know have goals to go there in the near future because i'm trying to maybe in november go for a month and i one of my missions there will be probably just try to talk to people because i'm not a fan of you know them using a state controlled wallet and maybe just by talking to them explaining them that there are maybe even easier things to use or just figuring out how we as uh, builders can help uh, develop software for them that will uh, you know enable them to separate their funds from the state funds and in my view as long as a regular citizen are able to acquire bitcoin and store it in a you know safe way uh and have more Bitcoin than their state does, that's a better, you know, uh, way of, uh, yeah, that's just better for me to, you know, that people having more uh, Bitcoin than state should be <laughs> always the goal. And yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, at the end of the day, I guess uh, it is also on us, on applications, builders to just uh, see how we can do things better. Because yeah, maybe Chivo is good because it is in Spanish and it explains some things that we aren't aware of. So 
just by, by going there, I think it is very beneficial. And I, I've seen like quite a lot of, uh, you know, uh, open source developers going to El Salvador for the same reason, just, you know, see how it all happens in the wild and, you know, how people are using BTC on, on streets. So I think that is very uh, important because you cannot develop applications without getting to know users and target audience and, you know, trying to, you know, that's one of the problems with open source as well. Like we all develop things behind our monitors. It is awesome. But yeah, when real people start using it, your entire vision in most cases collapses and you have to do adjustments and improve software. So I think that situation, I, overall, I think El Salvador will be great case study, at least for most of us on, you know, what shouldn't or should be done basically and uh, what kind of products we should do and what kind of, you know, do we really want to give politicians th that much control? Do we really even want Bitcoin, you know, politicians to have Bitcoin or to give them access to our community, to smart people? Like, do we need to ban them in a way we don't talk to politicians? Like we, I personally always am suspicious of them. I don't trust any politician ever. They all do what they do for their interest, of course. And yeah. But then you listen to El Salvador president who is talking about things and you're like, wow, this guy either had some people who really educated him properly because he's talking about all of these things and it is the only politician at this point that really talks to me. So I don't know. It's it's very interesting. But yeah, going there on the streets would be, I guess, uh, way better and seeing if people are really happy about it. Are they really using BTC? Are they saving or is it propaganda? Like, yeah, those don't, th sorts of things are dragging me into El Salvador, I guess. Yeah, applying to visit myself uh, potentially in November as well for the uh, Adopting BTC Summit. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, you've made a good point. Like, I don't necessarily trust politicians either. Um, and I think I think what um, Bukele has done in El Salvador is, is a very risky thing um, because if you think about politics, it's a very... It's often a very short-term game. Like people really remember the last like year or two of your presidency before they're then going to vote you in or out, right? Um, and so, from his perspective, like if, if he does all this and Bitcoin just happens to have a, a down couple of years in price or whatever, like it did do for the last sort of bear market, um, then he's run, like you know from a from a perspective of like an ordinary person just in El Salvador, he's running a pretty big risk because it could be like, well, you've put all of our money into this and it's halved in value. I don't really get what Bitcoin's about anyway screw you and i can definitely see that as a huge risk like from his perspective so um whereas if it goes up and doubles then you know he's the savior of el salvador so it's very it's a very big risk that i think he's taken to be honest um from a politician standpoint if i'm trying to be super you know like non-judgmental uh, as like a person who doesn't necessarily like politicians um so yeah i don't know i guess we'll see We'll see. But I think you're right. It's good to get out there if you can. And obviously, I know a lot of people can't, COVID, financials, whatever. But it's good to get out there if you can and, and see it for real. And, and uh, if we do get out there, hopefully we can do some podcasts from there or something like that and maybe uh, interview some people. Yeah, sure. That that would really be awesome. I, I agree with that stand as well. Like, uh, yeah, uh, price will probably be the biggest factor of, uh, you know, quote, success of it there but also like lots of tourism is being developed at this point lots of smart people go there lots of people are going to build companies there because of some you know regulations that now they have for you know bitcoin companies as far as i'm aware and i'm not like following it very closely but there are like some either no taxes or things like that there that are allowing people who are really smart all over the internet to go just go there and you know live there help uh, improve uh, you know, the El Salvadorian. And I mean, what we've done even with uh, Bitcoin Smiles is just awesome because if there wasn't for this, I, I assume we would never do it in El Salvador anyway. So it's getting a lot of uh, attention to the country, and but it can as well turn bad. So it really just help, comes down to what will people value it more? Is it like a short-term loss or short-term gain? Or are they going to look at it from the perspective, hey, we have lots of people from around the world helping our country, you know, being the residents right now, paying taxes on, you know, properties or whatever in, in our country and helping us uh, become a more developed country. Because if I look at it from that way, I really wish that I lived in a country where a president uh, have, you know, is that forward thinking and is attracting. In our country, they are like uh, doing taxes. If you're doing IT work, they're like taxing you like crazy because they, hey, this guy do, does IT work and IT, he's probably making a lot of money. So let's, you know, tax the heck out of him. So that is how they approach it here. Whereas, you know, in El Salvador, 
they're inviting all these people from all over the you know place to go there and try to you know improve improve it so yeah i guess it depends of if you're looking from it from a long or short term pers- perspective but knowing people, uh, yeah, it will probably just boil down to the price. Hopefully it won't. But Pablo next, I had one one last question because I know we're getting close to an hour. But um, when the El Salvador law was about to pass, did BTC pay notice an uptick of like Spanish speaking interest for uh, uh, like El Salvadorian businesses uh, considering BTC pay like as a solution for accepting Bitcoin? Yes, yes, we did. Um, however, you know, we don't have like marketing departments. We don't have lobbies that go in El Salvador. We just weren't ready as a community to, you know, go there. And basically it all happened so fast that companies that were fast, they had like, you know, even funding to send people there, shill this to companies, you know, try to connect. They were faster. We, we did see uh, quite a lot of people, uh, you know, asking how they can accept it. But what was interesting to me is that we saw like quite a few companies that wanted to uh, rebrand BTC Pay Server, you know, uh, translate it, cater it to their audience, which is also possible. BTC Pay Server is under MIT license. So we did see like people trying to, you know, understand how they can fork it and then contribute back. You know, we, we they wanted to translate the interface into Spanish, which we don't have now because we, we have like quite a lot of changes in our interface and we try to, you know, iron those one out before we introduce the, you know, localization for BTC Pay Server and BTC Pay Server being available in as many languages as, as there are. So, yeah, we, we did see increase in Spanish speaking audience, but we also saw like interest from companies wanting to, you know, um, decentralize basically, because to me, BTC, importance of BTC Pay Server isn't just really like every people running a server. Yeah, that would be ideal. But if they're like, 20 payment companies decentralizing this by using BTC Pay Server or any other software in the, in the, at the end of the day. Just, you know, being able to decentralize this and if there are big businesses that are able to run their own instances, that is good because that decentralizes the power. Imagine what would happen if like uh, entire economy of El Salvador depended on a single, you know, provider or on a single wallet application. To me, it is always like freedom of choice, having uh, the you know, access to all of these different applications so that you can easier transfer your wealth, you can store it safer, you know, not depending on anybody. And yeah, I guess that's, uh, it's interesting. I will definitely, uh, if I manage to figure out my visa things there, uh, I will be there for adopting Bitcoin. I do intend to stay there for a month or so and mostly just talking to people, seeing how we can onboard them, uh, how we can make things easier for them. What are their problems, basically? What are their, if they're struggling with, you know, Internet, can we maybe use LN URL pay to allow them to accept Bitcoin payments, but just by scanning QR codes completely offline? Is that something that we can maybe develop for them and things like that, you know? So, yeah, I guess you know, just being being there will be very interesting case study for me personally and for projects that I'm involved in. I will try to, you know, pass on experience to people as well. So hope to meet you there. Uh, fingers crossed. It'd be, uh, as you said, it'd be cool to, to visit and get a real a real view for what it's actually like and how Bitcoin's changed and changing things. Um, well, yeah, I guess as Ricardo said, we've run about an hour, which is a good time. So um, we'll, we'll call it a day, but um, Hey, uh, have next man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. It's been awesome to, uh, to talk to you and uh, get some good insight into you know, who you are, what you're about and BTC pay server and, and, and the other projects you're involved in like Bitcoin smiles. Um, it's much appreciated uh, that you took the time out of your day um and uh yeah i guess thanks to uh jerry and ricardo also for joining me and thank you to everyone out there who's listened too as well uh we appreciate all of you um but yeah uh I'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that um so yeah i guess uh take care everyone have an awesome morning afternoon evening day week year and uh we will see you all again uh sometime soon okay.